In the last lesson, you learned how to write formulas for ionic compounds. We're going to follow up today by learning to write names for ionic compounds. So we're going to start the same way we did last time by looking at just the very simple ionic compounds that only include two different elements. So the first one, NaCl, when you write the name for an ionic compound, the name of the cation, so the element that comes first, is just the name of that element. So here, Na is just sodium. And then the anion, so the one that comes second and has the negative charge, is also the name of the element. But instead of the ending that the element has, you're going to change it to an ied ending. So chlorine becomes chloride. So let's do another one. MgCl2, we're not going to worry about this too. In an ionic compound, the subscript, so how many of each element there is, doesn't uh, appear in the name at all. So Mg is magnesium, and it's a cation, so it's just the name of the element. And again, chlorine becomes chloride. So every compound name you ever write in this class uh, you're going to see the I'd ending too. CaO, Ca is calcium. And then O, oxygen, is the anion. So instead of oxygen, we're going to write oxide. All right, it's your turn. Hit pause and come back when you're done. All right, here are your answers. K is potassium. And you know by now that chlorine turns into chloride. Mg is magnesium. And oxygen turns into oxide. And last one, Al is aluminum. And even though there are three bromines here, I don't want you to say tri bromide. Don't do it. That's for covalent compounds. We're just going to turn bromine into bromide. A little messy, but there it is. All right, so we talked in the last lesson about transition metals that require the stock system. So it's a little bit more challenging to write the names of these compounds because we have to figure out what Roman numeral to use. And to do this, we're going to use the opposite of the process that we used in the last lesson. We crossed the charges last time. This time we're going to uncross them to figure out what the charge for the transition metal is. So here we have iron and chlorine. So we know it's iron. We know that iron is a transition metal. It's in the middle of the periodic table. And you know that Cl is chloride. So we just have to figure out what that Roman numeral is. Chlorine has this little two by it. Chances are that that is the charge for iron. We have an invisible one here. So I'm just going to check. Chlorine should be one minus. That's the invisible one that came up from there. So this two after chlorine is the charge for iron. So it should be iron with a charge of 2 plus, and we show that by drawing a Roman numeral 2. All right, here we have some copper, and we have oxygen, which is oxide. We know that copper is a transition metal, so we need to leave room for a Roman numeral. So let's see what happens. Um, I know in this case that oxygen is 2 minus, and that 2 went down here to the bottom. There's nothing after oxygen, so that must have been an invisible one, uh, which is a charge of one plus. So this must be copper one. And finally, a slightly more difficult one, Sn, S2. I know that Sn is tin. Tin is a trans transition metal, so I'm going to make a parenthesis to leave room for the Roman numeral. S is sulfur, which turns into sulfide. So let's take a look at this. There's nothing here after tin. However, if I moved a one minus after sulfur, that would be wrong because sulfur actually has a charge of two minus. You know that from the periodic table. And here we have two atoms of sulfur. So I'm gonna do a little trick here. I need to make sure that my whole compound has a neutral charge once it's bonded. So if I have two sulfurs, each with a charge of two minus, 
That means that the entire right hand side has a charge of minus four. This means that the tin must have a charge of plus four. So this must be tin four plus. So tin four is IV, tin four sulfide. So try some of these on your own, hit pause and come back when you're done. All right, here are the answers. So FeCl3, I know that Fe is iron, and I know that iron is a transition metal, so I'm gonna leave some parentheses. Chlorine turns into chloride. This three must have originally come from up here, and this invisible one must have been the charge for chlorine. So I know that this must be iron three chloride. PBO, this is a little trickier. So I know that PB is lead. I know that lead is a transition metal and that oxygen turns into oxide. Now we need to figure out what the charge for the lead is. This one's a little tricky because there are no subscripts, which is confusing because I know that oxygen has a charge of two minus. So there must have originally been a two down here. So if the right hand side had a charge of two minus, that means there must have originally been a two down here. So that lead must have also had a charge of two plus. So this is lead two oxide. And the twos just canceled out because we just want the ratio of atoms of one element to another in an ionic compound. Finally, CuBr, I know that Cu is copper. I know that it's a transition metal. Bromine turns into bromide. So I know that bromine has a charge of minus one, which must mean that the copper had a charge of plus one to balance them out. So there's a Roman numeral one, copper one bromide. All right, and we'll take another look at compounds with polyatomic ions. Here's the list again, you should memorize it. And here are a couple examples, KNO3. K is potassium. And NO3 is nitrate. And you just write down the name of the element and then the polyatomic ion, really simple. Mg3PO42, don't worry about the subscripts that were used to balance this formula. Mg is magnesium. And PO4 I know is phosphate. So we have magnesium phosphate. And last one, Al2SO43. Al is aluminum. It doesn't matter that there are two of them. And SO4 is sulfate. Super simple. Try a couple on your own, hit pause, and come back when you're done. All right, here are your answers. Na is sodium. And NO3 is nitrate. Mg is magnesium. And OH is hydroxide. Got to memorize that one. It's a little tricky. OH minus is hydroxide. And last one you should have calcium phosphate. All right, here are a couple that are all mixed up. The only tricky thing about this is that you have to figure out when to use the stock system. So in general, if it is a metal, sort of in the middle of the periodic table, you should. So try these, hit pause, and come back when you're done. All right, here are your answers. Fe NO32. Um, Fe is iron, and I know that it needs a Roman numeral because it could be iron two or three. NO3 is nitrate. I know that nitrate has a charge of minus one. So this two must have come from the iron. So this might, must be iron two nitrate. CAS, this one's very simple. CA is calcium. And S is just sulfide. Sulfur turns into sulfide. Don't confuse it with sulfate. S is just sulfide. Al2CO33, Al is aluminum. And CO3 is carbonate. And lastly, PBS2. PB is lead. 
And I know that lead is a transition metal. S is sulfide. So let's look and see what happens here. I can uncross the charges. However, there's nothing down here. And I know that sulfur has a charge of 2 minus. If the entire right side has a charge of 2 minus times 2, which is 4 minus, this must be lead 4. So lead 4 sulfide. All right, you are now able to name any kind of ionic compound.